What's going on everyone? My name is Evan Jemnikar and I'm the Daily Dino Guy. In this video, I'm teaming up with Unexpected Dino Lesson to give you an in-depth breakdown of one of the most controversial dinosaurs ever, Spinosaurus. We'll take a deep dive into the debate to see whether Spinosaurus could swim or not and see if we can settle it. So let me know in the comments if you think Spinosaurus could swim or not. First off, let's give a little background on Spinosaurus. Spinosaurus is one of the biggest predatory dinosaurs to ever exist. It was roughly 49 feet or 15 meters in length, which actually rivals T-Rex in size. This massive dinosaur is estimated to weigh up to 7.4 tons or 8.2 metric tons. Spinosaurus had one of the strangest bodies of all the theropod dinosaurs. The most obvious feature were its massive spines, which created a massive sail that reached up to 5 feet or over 2 meters in length. These spines would have extended down its back to give it a paddle-shaped tail. Its skull was also unique in that it convergently involved a long snout and cone-shaped teeth, just like crocodiles and alligators. Rather than have large and powerful legs, Spinosaurus had strangely small legs. We're not quite sure if it could support itself on those two legs or if it needed to walk on all fours. But either way, it would have been very awkward when it came to walking around. Spinosaurus mostly lived along the coast of northern Africa a hundred million years ago. This would have been as far west as Morocco and as far east as Egypt. Northern Africa during this time would have been very hot and dry. On average, it would have been about 96 degrees Fahrenheit or 36 degrees Celsius, and it only rained about a couple inches or centimeters a year. Although many other predatory dinosaurs lived near the coast, like Tamariraptor, Carcharodontosaurus, and Deltadromeus. Spinosaurus avoided competition with these other giant predators by mostly sticking to rivers and deltas. In these environments, it would have primarily eaten fish thanks to its long snout and conical teeth. And we've even found fish fossils that have large, round holes in them that look like they would have been left by a Spinosaurus. It's this unique lifestyle in this oddly specific diet has fueled this debate on whether or not Spinosaurus could swim. This whole debate started with the discovery of a partially complete skeleton from Morocco. This partial skeleton was the most complete fossil of Spinosaurus found so far, and it revealed all of its strange aspects like its short legs and paddle-like tail. Since then, everyone agrees that Spinosaurus probably spent at least some time in the water. His body is more aquatically adapted than any other dinosaur that we know of, but many paleontologists debate on how much time it spent in the water. Was it fully aquatic? and spent very little, if any, time on land? Or was it more like a wading bird and only spent some time in small bodies of water to fish? Both sides are pretty convincing, but let's start by giving the best argument that it was fully aquatic. First off, the paddle-shaped tail clearly shows it was aquadynamic and capable of moving in the water. This type of tail is a hallmark sign of an aquatic lifestyle. There have even been experiments showing that this type of tail is capable of treading water. Like a crocodile, it would have waved its tail back and forth to Pell itself. Second, Spinosaurus had really dense bones. Bone density is super important in determining whether or not something is aquatic. All bones are porous, which give animals some level of buoyancy in the water. But aquatic animals like whales, alligators, hippos, penguins, and manatees all have denser bones that help them stay underwater. When paleontologists cut open the bones of Spinosaurus, they found that they had really dense bones similar to modern diving animals. In fact, they were also very similar in density to transitional whales. This is completely different than any other dinosaur bones, which are not even close to this level of density. It's also very different than wading birds who have very lightweight and porous bones. Third, its skull has convergently evolved to look very similar to aquatic predators. Studies show that its long snout, conical teeth, and nostril position were most similar to Pliosaurus, a fully aquatic reptile. Overall, the skull was way more related to pliosaurs and mosasaurs, despite the fact that they have a shared ancestry with wading birds. But before we get to the other side of this debate, I want to take a moment to thank the awesome people that make videos like these possible. My Daily Dino Direct members. Thank you so much for your support and your passion for paleontology. Because of you, this channel is able to put out videos that are as understandable and as accessible as possible. If you want to help support this channel and take your dinosaur knowledge to the next level, then you should consider joining Daily Dino Direct. You'll get early access to these YouTube videos and exclusive lectures from me and other leading paleontologists in the field. So go to my website and sign up. All right, now let's give the best argument that it wasn't fully aquatic. First off, just because Spinosaurus had a body that would have made it awkward on land doesn't mean it would have made it better off in the water. Paleontologists have pointed out that the massive spines would have increased the amount of drag it would have experienced when swimming in the water. This would have made it extremely difficult for it to swim anywhere near the surface of the water. A 
fully grown Spinosaurus would have to be submerged 20 feet or 6 meters below the surface to avoid any type of drag and swim smoothly. This would definitely present some issues every time it went in or came out of the water. It also would have made it very difficult to come up to the surface to breathe. They also pointed out that it had an inflexible torso and weak tail muscles, which is unlike fully aquatic animals. If it truly did wave its tail back and forth like an alligator to propel itself through the water, its rigid torso would have made this extremely difficult. Third, while some paleontologists say that the nostril placement is more similar to fully aquatic predators, others say that they resemble wading birds instead. With the nostrils closer to its forehead, Spinosaurus would have been able to stick more of its head underwater while it waited for fish to swim by. And finally, there have been some fossils that have been referred to Spinosaurus that have been found in Nigeria. Instead of being a coastal environment, this would have been in the heart of Africa. It would have only had rivers and streams and maybe the occasional lake. As far as we know, it wouldn't have had any any large bodies of water needed for a fully aquatic animal. As you can see, both sides have pretty compelling arguments. The skeleton of Spinosaurus shows that it had many pieces of evidence that shows it was really well adapted for swimming and even diving underwater. However, there are many pieces of evidence that raise questions and even contradict the fully aquatic hypothesis, especially if they did live more inland than we originally thought. But what really makes this more complicated is that we don't have that many Spinosaurus fossils to study and things that would provide definitive evidence may be impossible to find. For example, until we find a Spinosaurus fossil in a marine environment, we can't say for certain that it was fully aquatic. But at the end of the day, this argument may just be coming down to semantics. Clearly Spinosaurus had some aquatic capabilities, and we know that it primarily ate fish. For now, that's enough information to understand its environment and the evolution of Spinosaurus. If you made it this far into the video, then you probably love dinosaurs as much as I do. If that's true, then you should subscribe to my newsletter. Each month, I gather every single study on dinosaurs that has been published and I send it directly to you. Normally, this will cost hundreds of dollars, but I send it to you absolutely free. You're not going to find a newsletter like this anywhere else, so go to my website and sign up. If you enjoyed this discussion on Spinosaurus, be sure to give it a like, subscribe, and hit that notification bell so you never miss another video from me. And don't forget, be sure to check out Unexpected Dino Lesson and Daily Dino Guy on all social media platforms for even more fascinating dinosaur facts. Until next time, keep exploring the age of past with me, Daily Dino Guy.